name is George Cross. I'm a representative from uh, Winooski. I spent uh, eight years in the house some time ago. I then left. I'm back. Uh, uh, took a six-year uh, sabbatical from that. This morning, uh, we want to introduce to you the resolution, which, has, which will be permanent. I'm not sure it's actually on the docket yet uh, regarding the F-35 and its deployment to uh, Burlington. Basically, the resolution uh, follows the pattern that the clergy had suggested earlier uh, in an open letter that says there's going to be several rounds of basing decisions, and we ought to skip this first round until we know more about this plane and, and can make a wise and informed decision at some point in the future. We have a couple of speakers, and we'd be glad to entertain some uh, questions at the end. Our first speaker is Roseanne Greco, who is the uh, city, is the chairman of the city council in South Burlington. And I'm gonna let Roseanne introduce herself for Roseanne. Hello, everybody. I I'm the chairwoman of chairwoman. South Burlington. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, I'm also a, re a retired Air Force colonel at that of any consequence to anyone. Um, this resolution is a great opportunity to take into consideration the information provided by the Air Force regarding the impact to our area from basing the F-35 here. The Air Force spent over two years and over two million taxpayer dollars studying the environmental impact of the F-35. The General Assembly 2010 resolution was made two years before this official government report was released. Now that we have the information, it would be wasteful and foolhardy to ignore it, especially since the Air Force report states that basing the F-35 in our area is not the preferred environmental alternative because of its negative impact to our communities surrounding the airport in the following areas. Noise, air quality, land use, socioeconomics, environmental justice, protection of children, community facilities and public services, ground traffic and transportation, and climate change. This is not a hypothetical situation. Because of the F-16, South Burlington has already lost over 60 some affordable homes and over 100 more are due to be demolished. We don't want what is happening in South Burlington to happen to Winooski or Burlington or Williston. If the F-35 is based in Burlington, 2,635 acres and over 9,000 people and over 4,000 households will fall within the noise area that the federal government classifies as unsuitable for residential use. By the way, this noise level is over double the noise level that the Environmental Protection Agency says is required to protect public health and welfare. Under the current F-16s, 189 homes in South Burlington fall within the noise area. Under the proposed F-35s, over 4,000 homes in South Burlington, Winooski, Burlington, and Williston will fall within the noise area. Of all the other bases being considered for the F-35, only our community will suffer such terrible consequences. We ask you to examine the information in front of you and to support this resolution to protect our neighborhoods and the people you represent. Thank you. Yeah, I'm John Ruer. I've been practicing medicine, emergency medicine primary care for 33 years now, treating lots of disease and learning what it takes to prevent disease. The F-35 is bad for our health. After its hearings and study last fall, the Burlington Board of Health had this to say. The Board of Health has concluded that noise has been associated with hearing loss, stress, sleep disturbance, heart attacks, high blood pressure, stroke, and delayed reading and comprehension. The Board of Health has concluded that aircraft engines produce numerous toxic combustion byproducts. And the Board of Health has concluded that every aircraft carries a risk of crashing and that there is an unknown safety rating on the F-35. 
We also know that the Environmental Protection Agency and the Federal Aviation Administration believes there's enough scientific evidence to say that the noise that the F-35 will produce over a very large area is incompatible with residential living. The City of Burlington believed this enough to spend 39 million taxpayer dollars to purchase homes exposed to the much smaller noise area of the F-16. This plane is bad for our health, period. I have found no debate on this. What needs to be quantified better is how bad. The purpose of this resolution is to give us time to determine how bad. I've heard it said repeatedly that the F-35 is no noisier than the F-4 Phantoms when they were here 40 years ago. Clearly, people were not dying in droves then. It was okay then, it must be okay now, right? Wrong. No one was looking at health effects back then. We do know that in the last 40 years, deaths from heart attacks, ha attacks have dropped dramatically. And that most of that is due to things like decreased smoking and health behaviors and better medical intervention. But much of the improvement is still unaccounted for. We are still looking for the explanation of why people have heart attacks when they don't have diabetes, high cholesterol, smoke, or have high uh, blood pressure. The one thing that researching this issue has taught me as a doctor is that noise levels are very likely to be one of those risk factors we're looking for. So my question today to the legislature of Vermont is do we want to take the state back to a less healthy time? Allowing this plane to come here would be like telling people to go back to smoking and eating pork rinds. Whatever you can say about the benefits of the F-35, you cannot, from a medical viewpoint, say it is good for our health or the health of our children. And even if you believe that this plane somehow contributes to our political safety or to our economy, the precautionary principle of avoiding potential harm to the public health until the risk benefit is shown more clearly requires that we not accept the risk of this aircraft in this first round of basing. Vermonters have a right to enough information to know just how bad likely harm is to befall them in order to make the decision about whether they want to accept that risk. And this resolution will serve that purpose. Thank you. I was a member of the House when the House resolution was presented in 2010. Uh, and I made it clear uh, during my campaign, one of the uh, questions asked in the Burlington Free Press that we had to talk about was the F-35. And I made my position clear that I was one of the five people that voted against that resolution in 2010. Uh, and I guess I could just say that given the election, apparently that wasn't uh, a problem for that many people. Um, whether that was a deciding factor for folks, I don't know one way or the other. But sometimes politicians are a little bit afraid to take controversial positions on issues and um, for fear of electoral retribution. And that didn't seem to be uh, a major problem. Um, you know, I, I worked in the intervale for many, many years uh, and certainly know the impact of having to basically be silenced when the planes are taking off and landing. Uh, and for folks that live in that area, um, it's an even greater impact than for me that went in and out of it uh, for my work. Uh, and it was really that direct experience of the current noise, much less the idea that it would be twice as loud at times, that uh, brought me to my conclusion. So, uh, happy to introduce a similar resolution in the Senate uh, and um, support the work of George and all the community members that are here today. Similar resolution, similar bill as well, or just the resolution? I haven't seen the bill, so um, for now I'm, I'm working on what I've seen and what I know. My suspicion is that the resolution, uh, when it is introduced on the floor, will get sent to the uh, Committee on uh, General Housing and Military Affairs. Uh, the initial indication from that committee is it's not a bill, it's not a resolution that they have a particular interest in. However, that could change. Everything in the legislature is fluid. What happens today is not necessarily what happens tomorrow. So we will find out. George, I remember during the campaign, the governor was asked, uh, do you support the F-35? Yes. If you're wrong and there are, is harm to the residential area surrounding the airport, would you support state compensation for those folks? And he said, not my problem, take it up with the military. Uh, I realize that, <clears throat> I realize that the governor is, is, is 
has a lot of talent in the area of avoiding questions and pushing them in a, in a different direction. So we'll just have to wait to see what happens. Someone else just asked me to address the safety impacts. We don't talk very much about that. But the F-35, as you know, uh, is very, very um, over, over its budget, almost 100% over budget, and years behind schedule. So the Air Force is, has decided that they're going to deploy it before it's fully tested. That is a very controversial issue. And normally, when we um, first deploy new aircraft in the Air Force, I can speak to the Air Force having been one, is that we usually do it in remote areas because new aircraft crash more when they are new. And um, statistically, they crash on takeoff and landing. This is the first time the Air Force has decided to deploy a new aircraft in a populated area, the most densely populated area in Vermont. So now you're gonna put a brand new aircraft that is being deployed before it's fully tested, carrying 18,000 pounds of fuel in the most densely populated area of Vermont, where over 4,000 homes are located in that crash zone area. I think that's a huge impact. That is a huge risk that we are taking. There are going to be 30 some uh, other looks at basing. Seven or eight of them are going to be looking specifically at air guard bases in the future. This is not Burlington's only opportunity to get the F-35. It's not if it doesn't come here now, it will never come here again, just the opposite. This is the, they're going to buy thousands of F-35s. There are two bases they're looking at for them right now, one from a guard, one from the active duty. They're only going to put 18 or 24 at each of those bases. What are they going to do with the rest of the thousands they've got laying around? So they're going to be going around looking at other bases in the next few years. It, I think, is a wise decision to take what the clergy is saying, and that is uh, choose to opt out of this first and initial basing round. It will give the plane some maturity, if nothing else, so that it goes someplace else and be test flown in another area. And we are the only area that has been looked at that, is a, that has a grave impact to its population. The other bases under consideration actually had a, a fewer people, if any, that were affected by it. So I see that from a safety perspective as a wise decision to take, you know, drop out of it now and take our chances. If we were the number one base this time, most likely we would be the top of the list next time. Again, we're not asking that it never come to Burlington. We're asking that we delay the decision at this point in time until there is more information available so that a wise decision can be made at the proper time. Uh, and again, you see the maps around. The, the area that the Air Force has claimed to be not conducive to residential living includes probably as much as 70% of Winooski. It includes affordable housing in all the communities that are involved. And we already know that there's roughly 200 houses slated to be torn down in South Burlington. The city of Burlington has already purchased uh, 136 of those houses. They've spent around uh, $39 million. The total property value that sits in the area that's as defined by the Air Force as not conducive to residential living is in excess of $600 million. Now, is someone gonna buy all those properties and tear them down? I think not. Any further questions? Thank you all.